I'm Sam Sutherland, and I'm in Hamilton, Ontario to meet up with Max from Arcals. We're going to talk about the best modern Americana albums, and we're going to drink a bunch of coffee at his favorite coffee shop. This place, it's a pine cone coffee. Yeah. I chose it, one, because the coffee's great. Excellent service, reason. Service is great. It's 20 feet from my house. <laughs> so uh, that's the main reason. Let's yeah. This is like lazy musician shit. Yeah, but uh, they, they treat me really well here. Thanks for th making the trip down the QW. So congratulations on your softball victory. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell we, me about your championship last night. It was a game five in a five game series. Intense. The, the other team was more talented than us, but we had a little bit more heart. We're called Pete Rose and the Gamblers. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. It's because it, a lot of baseball, uh, softball team names are usually stupid and like sexually suggestive. Ours is just a classy, <laughs> yeah. old school baseball reference. Almost all softball team names are ball puns. Yeah. Like ball every puns. single one. Yeah. Yeah. Or like pitches ain't shit or something like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah something like that. But, uh... <laughs> so. I wanted to start these conversations with people about the genres that it influenced them, not just the bands, because I think that's sort of a fairly standard question that I'm sure you get all the time. And so when I hit you up, I was like, well, what are you interested in? And you suggested modern Americana, which we agreed is potentially a totally invented term. Yeah, I made it up in the email that day. I was like, what, should I talk what do I want to talk about? about? Yeah. It's like modern Americana. It sounded kind of cool. Though. It sounds good. Well, I was thinking about uh, records that were you know, a big part of my formative years as like a songwriter, records like uh, that I really got into between the age of, you know, 16 and 21 when I first mm -hmm. started to really try to write songs. They're really the template for me uh, when it comes to chord melodies and storytelling and lyrics. Was there some trash music that you listened to before you were 16, before you discovered these records? So what I was into was like a lot of pop and R&B, like I would like love Nelly and, and Mace. Yeah. When I decided I was gonna be a serious songwriter around mm -hmm. the age of 16, uh, I started getting into, yeah, a lot of like sort of folk, traditional sort of folk Americana mm -hmm. singer-songwriter stuff. Yeah, so you suggested sort of five records that are kind of like the primer for what we're calling modern Americana yeah. in this context. So, let's, let's, start, let's start here. So yeah. at the top of the pile, we got Bright Eyes. Uh, I'm Wide Awake, It's Morning. Ooh, this record, I think, came out in 2005. Yeah, at the it, same time as, as the, the uh, Digital Ash and the Digital yeah. Earn. So same up, day. This one's a lot more folk and stripped down. And mm -hmm. this is his masterpiece of ours. I love this record. It, because his earlier stuff was like a little too emo tinge for me. Yeah. Um, you weren't a sad 16-year-old. No, I, w I wasn't. I, you don't seem like a sad boy. I, was, I wasn't a sad emo 16-year-old kid. I was, I don't know, pretty, pretty content. I think of the bunch, he's probably my favorite lyricist. My favorite song on this is the last track, which is the, I guess it's the title track. <laughs> It's just the OJ. Let's it's, fuck him up, boy! It's like, so good. Yeah. And that's another thing I liked uh, that I learned about um, getting into folk music is that you don't have to have the best singing voice. Mm -hmm. You just have to have an original voice. Yeah. So Connor Oberst, objectively speaking, if you were to like strip away his awesome lyrics and a, a great band, you'd be like, is this guy actually a good singer? Mm -hmm. And the answer is probably no. But because he's original and then he pairs it up with amazing lyrics then it means something and so you can say the same thing for dylan you can say the same thing for neil young yeah i saw uh bright eyes play at the phoenix when this album came out and they, they were just playing this record and it was like oh, wow. wonderful and just this incredible show and and connor Oberst was like doing this really dramatic like just kind of guitar part like really into it and started walking backwards and just ate shit and like disappeared for 10 seconds. Like we just couldn't see him. And I was like, this is the funniest thing that's ever happened. I've been there a few times. Myself. Have you wiped out? Like he, what's your my, biggest wipeout? My biggest wipeout story wasn't even our show. It was the Burlington Santa Music Festival and mm -hmm. Tokyo Police Club was playing and we're mm -hmm. all friends with them. And I went out to the front of the stage trying to be like a big boss, like to the crowd. Yeah, the big lead singer man. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Look over here. I took a step back and didn't realize where I was and I crashed into Graham's keyboard <laughs> setup and knocked over all of them. <laughs> Uh, thank God he was playing guitar at the moment and it was the last song. The last song, so it was yeah, good. So he good. didn't ruin the show. That is a good transition actually yeah. to, I want to talk about the Ryan Adams record. Oh, nice. Uh, I keep wanting to call it Stone Roses, yeah. but not Stone Roses, but Cold Roses. Are you a Ryan Adams fan? I am a fan of Heartbreaker. One of the things I do know about this is the reason why it kind of vibes the way that it does is that he broke his arm is before that really? recording I didn't even it. Know that. So he broke his arm, he fell off stage. Classic, yeah. Classic Max Arkell's move. Yeah. Fell off stage, broke his arm, and couldn't play guitar for like six months. This record kind of emerging from that weird despair and like relearning the skill that he's had since he was a kid. Which is which I love. crazy, because he 
knocks out like 17 songs on this record. It's, it's like a double, this is a double album. It's a double yeah. album. He put out three records this year in 2005. Yeah, and by the way, he had also previous to that put out like a record every year. Mm -hmm. When you go through his set list today, he has so many records. There's a number of songs from this record that always make the set. Get her still. Yeah, Let Her Rides yeah. on It, Magnolia Mountain. I remember reading about him and just like his sort of philosophy on songwriting. And he was very uh, sort of matter of fact about it, and I try to keep that in mind when I'm mm. when I'm like pretending to be a tortured artist. He's like, eh, it's not that complicated. Just sit down and write a song. Mm. I was like, oh yeah, I'll just try to do that. Like, stop getting so inside your head. Just just try to put out some words and next to some music, and you might have a song. Ryan actually has a beautiful voice too. Yes, and he's the kind of guy that he can sing anything. He could literally be singing about anything. I took a shit in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like in the constipation. Yeah. It's like it didn't matter. His classic bowel movement yeah, album. Yeah, yeah exactly. The full, yeah. He has one in the bag. Yeah. So I'm not gonna lie, Dawes, not a band I'm super familiar with. Oh, cool. So I need you to sell me on this. Okay. So they're from Southern California. Yeah. They're a real band's band. They toured being the band mm -hmm. for Connor Oberst. I think Channy Lewis, the Jackson Brown. They're oh, Jackson shit. Brown's band. You're doing a very good job selling yeah, this so right now. Yeah, so they're kind of like they're yeah. kind of that band in LA that everybody's like, uh, does. So super talented, cl really classic songwriter. He sounds a lot like Jackson Brown. And so this being called All Your Favorite Bands is not even just a clever title then. No. This is literally someone who is a part of all of my favorite bands. Yeah, yeah, no, honestly. Yeah. He's a real storyteller. Because mm -hmm. uh, I think that's my bag too, is to try to tell a story, not to be veiled about much mm -hmm. or to be vague. And uh, this record was actually, it's actually kind of cool because this they had three records out before this, but this was sort of my intro real introduction to them. Yeah, I love that when you get into a band and then you go, oh, okay. I, 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 lucky for me, I have three records I can go back and discover now. Uh, it's not like I have to wait around for the next one. Mm -hmm. So this is interesting, because we're talking, you know, Bright Eyes, Dawes, Ryan Adams. This record went seven times platinum. In yeah. Canada and in America. So this is like, out of all these records, absolutely the most sort of mainstream popular one that I feel like people might take for granted. So like, totally. when someone wants to make fun of the Counting Crows and you're like, no, no, no. This is, I consider, one of the sort of key pillars of Americana music today. Yeah. Why is that? Sometimes like music that's considered lame or just like uncool mm -hmm. in the moment or even for the preceding 10 years gets validated. <laughs> yeah. Just based on the strength of the music. You can say whatever you want about Adam Dirt's fake dreadlocks. <laughs> well, they're real, they're real dreadlocks, right? I think they're fake. What? You didn't know this? There was a big Rolling Stone article a couple years ago. It was like, yeah, they're fake. <laughs> like it's a, is it a wig? I think it's a wig. Hey, we're gonna have to investigate. Okay, that. yeah, this is this is a whole different interview where we investigate. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna do a follow up piece where we, we, we investigate. We should do an investigative report. This is like interesting. Yeah, yeah. This is okay. Yeah. Okay, so noted, guys. Make that make that yeah. note. But the songs you go through these songs, it's like around here is on this record. Yeah, uh, Omaha, Anna begins, Mr. Jones, and you're like, these are timeless songs. Absolutely. So the last record that we have to rap about is like one of the greatest records of all time. Yep. Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. I, this is a record where I literally remember hearing it for the first time. Do you remember the first time you heard this record or what was your introduction I, to this album? I can't say the exact place, but I was in first year university. Mike and I were sharing music a lot. Yeah. And somebody had given, some music head on his floor in res had given mm. him this record and then I got into it. And I remember being very confused, Yeah. but very intrigued. Because the rest of these records go, generally go down pretty smooth. Yeah. This one, smacks you around a bit and mm -hmm. doesn't give you the song gently. It's like you kind of got to work for it a little bit. So it's yeah. like the opening track, I'm Trying to Break Your Heart, has all this weird noise and experimental stuff going on. But underneath it, it's a beautiful three chord song. It's a perfectly simple song yeah. that they've just... Fucked up. Yeah. And then I watched the doc and then I was like, whoa, this is what being in a band's all about. Mm. Like, you know, band's fighting, they're getting dropped from the label. You, you learn a lot about like what you think a band life looks like. It's not quite as turbulent. I, think <laughs> I was like, wow, is, is this what it's like to be yeah, in Because really that doc is one of the greatest music films of all time Amazing. and it is depressing. It's not, I guess it's a redemption story. It's depressing yeah, but it's for, very depressing it's depressing for, for Jay. Yeah, yeah. But this record really taught me, um, yeah, that you don't have to serve it up for people. You can make people have to like dig in a little bit mm -hmm. more. And as long as sort of the, like the, the song underneath is strong, then you can afford to fuck with people a little bit. Like I love uh, Pot Kettle Black, War on War is amazing, Poor Places. But it doesn't feel, what's so great about, about this record is that it's this classic songwriting with all of this sort of 
bizarre, noisy experimentation yeah. that doesn't feel superfluous. Like it's no. not there to be like, we're uh, <clears throat> very cool Artie yeah, Bros. Uh, oh, like, I'm on the ground fiddling with pedals now. Exactly, I think there are, there are times when like bands will overcomplicate their songs, but sometimes like a, you know, a good song is a good song, but these are good songs that are made better yeah. by the complications, by totally. the sort of layers, by the, by the difficulty of it. Yeah. Like imagine I'm Trying to Break Your Heart, which is one of the greatest songs I've ever written, just as a straight pop song, I mean, it'd still be great, but instead it's like this transcendent piece of yeah. music. Yeah, I remember uh, there was like this random ass field uh, in the student ghetto at McMaster. And I remember just <laughs> random like, ass field. And it's kind of, it's like a, one of those, uh, one of those power lines kind of going through it. Yeah. And I remember just like walking to my girlfriend's house at the time. Uh, I was playing um, I'm Trying to Break Your Heart. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, this is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> I do have a memory of that, yeah. like walking through a field under the power lines. Just thinking about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> thinking about stuff. Just, it's a record that does make you think about stuff, yeah, which I love. Stuff. So these are sort of five amazing sort of modern Americana records. Yeah. If you're if you're curious about sort of some roots, like not even specifically of Arkells, but like what sort of influenced you to want to you know be a be a more cerebral kind of songwriter, totally. lyrical focus. These are the records people should check. Yep. Out. Yeah, you can't go wrong with any of them. Awesome. Thanks so much for your time. Man. Hey, thank you. This is awesome. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to be very engaged in what yeah. you have to say. All right, clapping again. This is not as good of a clap, to be honest. And this is all cut, right? Like, it's this is like live. This is 100% live. It's Facebook live, right? Facebook, yeah, this is everything Facebook live now. <laughs> is, this, is the top of the record open with him on a plane? Yeah, it's the yeah. story where he's just clicking on the guitar and it's yeah. like, uh, you know, and then it went da da da. Yeah. That's my Conor Obers Yeah, that's pretty good actually. Thanks, man. Is that or a sheep? I like the idea that like you're still keeping it real on the go bus. I like, do, people who know? think that you're getting too big for your britches, it's like no no no. Max rides the go bus. But, you know, it, it is funny. I, I like the go bus. It's like yeah. you can just kind of do work on it. Do you get recognized on the go bus though? This is the thing. Sometimes, <laughs> occasionally, people will be like tweeting about it. I'm mean, like, Max, is, like at Arkell's music, Max, I think you're on the bus with me. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like yeah. I'll is that less weird than actually coming up to you? Or is that the weirdest That's thing? That's the weirdest thing. thing. <laughs> if you want to like pop up, hey, you just, you know, yeah, you know like, man, whatever. Like the... Yeah, I'm an easy crier too. Are Apparently you? I'm a very ugly crier. Uh, <laughs> my friend Mike just got married and I was crying the whole ceremony. Really? But it wasn't like a distinguished cry. I was like, <laughs> 